Hey everyone, welcome back to Chanel Romaine Art. We are getting ready to dive into this, um, this painting here, this abstract painting that I just simply came up as I went. Um, I didn't know what direction this painting was going in when I started, but uh, sometimes you just gotta, you know, flow, let, you know, let the canvas speak to you, you know? But anyway, um, I am here using, I'm coloring my background and the color I chose for the background is called Yellow Deep and it's by Master's Touch. I get my paints from both Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Um, however, I have to sometimes remind myself to support the local, locally owned art stores. So if you um, have a locally owned small business that sells paint in your area, please support them. You all but this here this paint I'm using is red it's a mixture of red and fluorescent red so it's regular red and fluorescent red that I'm adding to the canvas and the previous layer is still wet I did not allow that to dry I kind of wanted to blend and I'm just going down without even thinking you know hard about it just covering the canvas up allowing some of that yellow to to uh see through as well next I'm gonna turn it over so that I can get the other end now if you're gonna um, hang this up or gift it to someone I would recommend that you paint the edges as well with each layer At the end of this, we're actually, I'm gonna show you all how to frame it. I went about and framed this piece. So um, I think whether you frame it or not with this, this is a really thin staple back canvas. I really like to be able to complete these by painting the sides, whether I frame it or not, it's, if it's for someone else, just to give them the option to um, take, the, take the frame off and hang it up as is. This can be a really great one-of-a-kind gift to someone that you know enjoys art, especially if you know their color palette at home. Um, some people buy art based off of that, you know, for decorum purposes. And so here is some purple that I'm using. I did not end up using all of those colors on my palette, on the plate that you see. That black, I never touched it, FYI. But you can use whatever colors speak to you, whatever colors you want. I might even do a different color version of this particular um, abstract piece because I really like it. It looks so much better in person than it does on camera. I'm really trying to figure out how to best display um, as close to the real image as possible. I, you know, I might have to invest in some more equipment in order to do that, but one of these days I'll be able to show you all how it really looks. Now I'm not gonna go and cover every inch with one, you know, with the, the same color, except for the first layer, of course. Um, so I'm allowing those other color, colors to show. Next, I'm going in with magenta. I love magenta, you all. Once again, these colors are from Hobby Lobby. These painting, these um, paints, they're called Master's Touch. And they retail for, a, a believe between some of them are master's touch others are liquitex so some of them were uh as low as six dollars others were as low as ten dollars the tube but you can always find cheaper paint you can buy those little small 79 cent bottles as well i really enjoyed those but these were the ones i had on hand at the moment and these are actually some of the paint that i use for my um my fine art but for a fun art like this I really like to use less expensive paint um, that is a fluorescent color that you see me picking up that red fluorescent 
and I'm just filling in the edges cleaning up, up around the edges and making sure that there's no white being shown that they're all covered with paint And obviously you can do that with a brush instead of your hands. <laughs> still using that fluorescent red to just go back in and blend a little bit adding some more paint blending it in now this all of these layers are still wet except for the bottom probably the um the yellow color that I the initial background color that probably is not as wet anymore but the other colors are still wet and that is done on purpose now this water bottle is from Hobby Lobby I got it for ten dollars you can get it off of Amazon as well but once again, if you have a small locally owned store that has it, please support them. And I'm using that to add water to the canvas to blend that fluorescent red and just the colors to blend them in a little bit more. Now, here comes the fun part. This here, I ended up using a palette knife, you guys. I don't know how much these are. I've had this for God knows how long. But I am going in and uh, taking away layers of paint in specific shapes well nothing too specific but <laughs> i'm just using the edge of that paint palette to take away some of those layers so that the bottom layer can seep through or show through And now I'm just thinking about, hmm, what should I do next? <laughs> Still thinking what I, sh what I should do next. I'm going to take the back of this paintbrush to draw some shapes. I'm going to use it as a pencil, the back part. Wipe off that excess paint, go back in, create another shape. And once again, these are just things that came to me as I was painting. Nothing um, that I thought about previously beforehand. And some of the paint was too dry to really draw on it or to take some of the paint off. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Just keep going with the flow. Don't let that stop you. But that is the reason why you kind of want to do something like this quickly without allowing it to dry too much. And one of the things I like to do is try to create balance within my abstract pieces. So 
The fact that I have those little rectangle shapes down there revealing that yellow, I am actually going to go ahead and create that the opposite um, angle. Create that same dynamic on the opposite side of the canvas. Meanwhile, I'm actually just going in and drawing some more. And you can create whatever shapes you want. This is me thinking about what I'm gonna do next. And you don't have to be this messy. You certainly don't have to be this messy. So I'm going in creating a bit of balance. The fact that I put those yellow squares in the top right hand corner is what um, kind of convinced me to put them in the bottom left hand corner as well. And this is me thinking, okay, what am I gonna do next? <laughs> Can't go wrong with some circles, right? <laughs> if you feel like you made a mistake in an abstract piece, just keep going. You never know what that mistake may lead to. Um, before I started doing like once I finished the background of this painting, I didn't know what I was gonna do, y'all. It took me a good five to seven minutes to figure out what I was gonna do before deciding to move on to a new canvas and painting over this. So don't, don't um, throw your canvases away. You can always paint over them if you don't like what you created or if you just kinda allow the painting to speak to you, you can create something nice. And I'm definitely gonna create a few more of these pieces, quite a few more. I really love this style of painting. It's so carefree. And once you get the hang of it, it's so freaking relaxing, you all. Once you learn to stop overthinking it, oh my goodness, it's very freeing and therapeutic. Right here, I decided to pencil in my name <laughs> to sign my painting. You can sign your painting anywhere you'd like. And so this is basically the end of this piece. Um, I decided I was done with it. If I did anything else, it would just be too much. I, 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 you know, you kind of learn after a while when you're done with the piece. And I feel like I was done with that. And I absolutely love this painting, you all. It's so beautiful. It's even better in person. And then I'm also going to show you all how I went about framing this. Hey, y'all. 
uh, so we're gonna go ahead and frame our image now you can use this to hang up in your home or whatever or give it to someone as a gift this Christmas or for any occasion I guess a gift for any occasion birthday or whatever the case may be um, I have a 16 by 20 frame this is a 16 by 20 canvas the way I go about measuring the correct size of the frame is turning it over to the back side so you can either use a ruler or measuring tape to measure the correct size of the frame but the way I go about fitting my images is I'll is, you know hold on <laughs> some people will automatically think oh well, let me see if it, this this image will fit and they'll go ahead and try fitting it from the front and that it doesn't seem like it fits but that's not the correct way to go about doing it this here is the correct way you want to do it through the back through the back way okay so I'm gonna fit this frame in here the back way Turn it over. Voila. <laughs> so that is that. And it looks really good in person, you all. It looks really good. Mm -hmm.